And we're back, YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate that. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about uh, mod lists for Skyrim. And I've been modding my Skyrim for years. And the great thing about that, well, first of all, it is fun to do. It's fun to download a mod, implement it in your game, and see if it works. And when it does, and it's seamless, then that's a great thing. Uh, you can enhance your your game the way you want it. So it's very modular. It's very specific, catered to your taste, right? The disadvantage of this is that things will break. You will forget to patch certain mods. You will overlook that a certain mod has certain dependencies that you forgot to install. And sooner or later, the game will crash. Now here comes the mod list, right? Where somebody else has compiled a whole bunch of mods all together for you to easily install through uh, Wabajack, for instance. Now, the great thing about this is, of course, that it's faultless. If, if you use certain mod lists that are very, very well established, then there's hardly a problem with those. You can, you can play those uh, without any problems. But something to realize is that a mod list sort of reflects the personal taste of somebody else, right? And that means that you're playing a version of Skyrim that this other person likes to play Skyrim, you know, the way that he, that person plays Skyrim. And you're playing that version of Skyrim. And, you know, adding stuff to an already existing mod list, you can do it in, in with some mod lists, but I wouldn't recommend it, But because again, stuff will uh, break. But just keep in mind that this is a personal reflection of how another person likes to play uh, Skyrim. So it is a good idea to understand what type of mod list you would like to play, because there are actually, in my opinion, like three categories to choose from. The first one being the over-the-top power fantasy mod list, something like Nolvus, uh, something like Lost Legacy. These are mod lists where all kinds of stuff is just thrown together, whether or not it's lore friendly or not, it's all thrown together. And it's basically a fun list. You know, nothing more, nothing less. So that's one category. The other category is a somewhat more complicated category. And I'll, I'll call it a category of beautiful graphics combined with modern combat, right? I'm thinking about, about mod lists like Lorem, like Apostasy, or Rovan. Mod lists that have beautiful graphics, so you need a pretty good PC to run it, but also combines it with sort of MCO, so modern combat uh, modifications. So modifications that make the game harder, um, more souls-like, if you will, where you can roll and dodge and block, and it's it's just going to be hardcore, so to speak, more challenging. Sometimes these mod lists also incorporate a version of Requiem, which makes it so that the whole of Skyrim is de-leveled, which means that when you start your character, you are not easily going to kill enemies because of the de-leveling and this is particularly the i think the disadvantage of these type of uh, mod lists is that the world in my opinion of skyrim was not designed for it right the world of skyrim was designed to to go into and run off get a quest go to a place kill enemies come back and do it again, right? You'll be distracted and do th stuff like that. That's not the um, the way that you need, you should be playing these these these, these MCO, these hardcore mod lists, because effectively you will be locked out of many of the locations 
that are available for players when you're playing Skyrim, like the vanilla version of Skyrim. For instance, when you go to Riverwood, one of the earlier quests is that you need to retrieve the Golden Claw. And to do that, you have to go to Bleak Falls Barrow, where there are a bunch of enemies waiting for you, so you need to kill those, right? In vanilla Skyrim, you can do that. Uh, not in Lorem, not in Apostasy, you'll go there, you might be able to kill one or two of them, but then you will be running out of steam, because they will, they will own your ass, right? So effectively, for a quite long period of time, you will be locked out of certain content. That means that you'll be grinding your way uh, through the game, not even doing a lot of quests, but just fighting enemies to, to level up and to get those attributes going and to, to get perks and whatnot. So you have to understand that you'll be investing a lot of time into that character and not doing quests. So if you're in it for questing, for the lore, for, for the story, that sort of stuff. Uh, not from the get-go. It costs a lot of time. And to me, even though I, I love my MCO combat, uh, that stuff isn't that much fun in the long run. Now, the last category of mod lists that you can find on Wabajack is the sort of vanilla plus mod lists, right? Where it doesn't strafe too far away from that particular Skyrim experience that we all know and love, right? We're playing Skyrim still because we love this game. So what these mod lists usually do is sort of upscale the graphics, giving you uh, some better combat, adding more quests that are sort of lore friendly into the mix. I'm talking about mod lists like Winds of the North, Morningstar, uh, Anvil, sort of baseline mod lists that give you a sort of vanilla-esque experience, but also something like uh, Nordic Souls uh, that is already a lot more than just vanilla plus because it adds also a different kind of, uh, of graphics and, and combat and other things, but still is still recognizably Skyrim. Um, so, when you want to commit to a full playthrough of Skyrim, then you really need to think about what type of game do I enjoy the most? Do I enjoy the power fantasy with over-the-top spells and weapons and whatnot? Do I enjoy the more hardcore experience, but also like a more of a grindy experience? Or do I enjoy a vanilla-esque experience uh, uh, you know, and, and choose carefully out of those three. So that's what I think of uh, Mutt List for Skyrim. So let me know what you think and see you in the next one. Clear skies. Life's hard enough with all these men propositioning me, but that bard is the worst.